What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Ooh, tonight we're talking about something the US have been asking me for a very long time, so I finally decided to sit down and actually make a video on it. That's right, we're talking about wastegates. What is a wastegate? What's an internal wastegate, external wastegate? All these questions that you guys might have, so hopefully this answers all of your guys' questions regarding wastegates. Now, let's just jump right into it. What is a wastegate? A wastegate is a bypass or a small valve within a turbo or can be external as well that helps regulate boost pressure. It keeps the turbo from hitting max PSI or or whatever its minimum PSI might be. So it's a very good regulation device on how much pressure is actually getting into the turbo. Now without any type of wastegate, whether it be internal or external, your turbo would just be running at max PSI all the time, which hey, it sounds like a great time, right? Until you blow your motor or until you like get crazy, like crazy boost spikes. And then, I mean, I guess you'd blow your motor still. It'll blow your motor if you don't have a wastegate. So get into some wastegate action. So if you don't know what an internal wastegate looks like, it's gonna look something similar to this right here. See that small flap on the backside of the turbo? That's gonna be your internal wastegate. It's essentially a small flap, which is a diverter valve essentially that diverts some of the exhaust gas away from the turbine wheel and pumps it through the wastegate. So as the turbo is building pressure and as the turbine wheel is spinning, some of that excess exhaust gas has to go somewhere because if you have all of the exhaust gas going straight to the turbo, like we said, it's just going to keep building boost boost until A, either the turbo runs out of chooch or B, until your motor runs out of chooch and either option is not a good idea. So what the wastegate does at a certain PSI set either by the factory or by a tuner, that wastegate is going to open up and that is going to allow all of that excess exhaust gas to bypass away from the turbo. So let's say you're tuned to 18 PSI on your stock VF43, VF39, whatever turbo you might have out there. Once you hit 18 PSI, that internal wastegate flap is going to open up and it's going to allow that exhaust gas to bypass the turbine wheel to go into the downpipe. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a waste gate. It's a small gate that opens up to allow all the waste exhaust gas that you're not using to be bypassed through the turbo. Now, one of the main disadvantages of having an internal wastegate is yes, they work very efficiently. Uh, it's a very compact and small design. You don't have all these bulky extra options, extra piping that you have to route for an external wastegate. An internal wastegate is gonna be very compact, but the disadvantage is that internal wastegate hole is so small that it just, it has trouble mitigating how much excess gas can pass through it. Eventually, that small hole is going to be overwhelmed. It's not gonna be able to get all of that exhaust gas out, and then that air has to go somewhere or that gas has to go somewhere. So it's gonna backtrack a little bit it's gonna spin that turbine wheel up a little bit quicker and that's something known as boost creep. But we're gonna get into that a little bit a little bit later. Uh, I've talked about boost creep a little bit in the past, but I'm not gonna jump too much into it right this second. Now, what is an external wastegate? So you might see on a lot of turbos, especially the one on the BRZ, if you guys remember when we installed that turbocharger on it, it didn't have any type of internal wastegate plumbing on it. It was external wastegate only. So you'll see this on a lot of aftermarket turbo applications, especially with like Garrett, Precision, Borg, Warner, some of these bigger turbos that you're gonna be running they won't even have options for an internal wastegate, so you're gonna have to run an external wastegate. Now here's where external wastegates come in. Once you've exceeded the amount of exhaust gas that you can push through that stock internal wastegate or an aftermarket external wastegate hole and you start seeing some of that boost creep, you're gonna have to swap over to an external gate. Now external gates typically come in 38, 40, 44, 45, I believe, millimeter sizes. I'm sure there's other varying sizes out there, but those are typically gonna be the most frequently ones you see. On the STI, when we did the FP Blue on there, we ran a 44 millimeter external wastegate. On the BRZ right now, we have a 40 millimeter external wastegate. So sizes can definitely vary. But what the external wastegate does is it opens up the exhaust a little bit more so you have a larger diameter hole for the exhaust gas to flow through. So that way you're not overworking a tiny hole on the backside of the turbo. You're opening up the diameter of it a lot more and it really helps control boost a little bit more and helps set target pressure whenever your tuner is tuning your car. Now the diversion of the exhaust gas helps to regulate the turbine speed of the turbo. So therefore it helps set the PSI or the boost pressure of whatever you're trying to achieve on your car. So it's a much more efficient system versus having those internal wastegates. Now, for example, if you take a stock turbo, most of the internal wastegate sizes are gonna be around 18 millimeters. If you were to say to bump up to a 38 millimeter external wastegate, you're gonna see an increase of about 20 millimeters, which is gonna result in about a 52% increase in efficiency just from the wastegate. So I mean, that's a pretty good bump. 
pretty good like bump in efficiency. Why would you not want that? So I touched on boost creep a little bit, so I'm gonna expand on it a little bit more for those of you that don't know. Like I said, once that internal wastegate hole gets overworked, that exhaust gas has to go somewhere. So if you can't physically flow enough exhaust gas out of your internal wastegate, that gas has to go somewhere. So it spins up that turbine wheel a lot more, and in turn it obviously spikes your boost a little bit. This can be a lot more frequent in colder weather as the air becomes more dense than it would be in summertime, but it's still a very real issue. A lot of you guys ask me, why would you want to go to an external wastegate? It's a pretty good reason right there. Now, why would you want an external wastegate? Yes, it helps regulate boost pressure. Yes, it helps regulate and completely mitigate boost creep, but also it does allow you to run a smaller AR on your turbo because you are able to fit a more compact housing on the back side of the turbo. If you don't know what AR is, it's area over radius. I'm not going to go into the whole cross-sectional divisionary math portion of it, but it's essentially the hot side of your turbo. So if you can eliminate having an internal wastegate on there, it allows you to run a smaller housing, which in turn will help spool up the turbo a little bit quicker and you're pulling a little bit more stress off of it. It's less moving components in a turbocharger because if you think about it, it's spinning like 200,000 RPMs per minute. Is that right, per minute? Per minute, yeah, 200,000 RPMs per minute. And uh, pulling that internal wastegate off there is just one less mechanical mechanism that you have to have attached to your turbo. So it allows you to run other turbo options. You can mix and match your AR size. You can pick out what turbo you want, but we're not going into that today. Now, when it comes to what size external wastegate you should get, you guys ask me this question a lot. Should you get the 38 millimeters? Should you get the 44 millimeters? Should you get a 40, a 45? There are so many sizes. There's so many sizes. Do we want big? Do we want small? Now, typically speaking, a 38 millimeter external wastegate is gonna be used when you're trying to target higher boost interval numbers. So if you're trying to hit a higher PSI, you'd want a smaller wastegate around 38 millimeter, 40 millimeter. If you're shooting for lower boost intervals, you're gonna want a 44 or a 45 millimeter external wastegate. Now, if we sit here and we think about it for a minute, a 38 millimeter is definitely smaller than a 44. Now, the reason you'd want a smaller external wastegate if you're trying to target higher boost is you're trying to limit how much exhaust gas flows through there. So prior to this, we were struggling with trying to get all of the gas out. Now at this point, you're not trying to evacuate all of the gas. So if you're shooting for a higher PSI number, you still want most of that exhaust gas going to the turbine wheel. Now, if you're trying to expel as much of the exhaust gas as you can, you're obviously gonna want a larger diameter external wastegate. This is gonna allow more of the gases to flow out of the wastegate and not to the turbine wheel. Now, a good way to think about it is big turbo, low boost, big wastegate. Big turbo, high boost, small wastegate, small turbo, high boost, small wastegate, small turbo, low boost, big wastegate. Now for the most part, you guys are gonna be able to get away with using just a single 38 millimeter wastegate. Unless you are on a twin scroll setup, then you're gonna need two of them bad boys to help regulate boost pressure because you guys are obviously twin scroll, so you're gonna need one for each scroll setting. All right, let's talk about spring rates. Spring rates, spring pressure, spring bar, all the bar, all the good stuff whenever it comes to setting up your wastegate. Now, if you guys remember when I set up my external wastegate for the STI a couple months ago, actually, it really wasn't that long ago, I ended up going with a 0.9 bar. Now, typically, you're always going to want to ask your tuner what wastegate spring pressure you should be setting in your wastegate because they're the ones that are tuning the car. They're the ones that are going to be controlling how much boost the wastegate is allowing. So always ask your tuner and double check what spring rate you should be using in your wastegate. But typically speaking, if you don't know, you don't have a tuner, you can't get a hold of a tuner, 0.9 bar is a pretty safe setting. If you don't know, one bar is about 14.7 PSI, so pretty much all your spring ratings are going to be in bar. R versus PSI. So let's talk about three-port boost controllers real quick because they do interfere with wastegates a little bit. So essentially what a three-port boost controller is doing is it's interrupting the signal between the boost source and the wastegate, keeping the wastegate shut a little bit longer. So once the three-port boost controller sends the signal to the wastegate, that's when it opens up and it allows all of that exhaust gas to start flowing out of the wastegate. So I did want to touch on that one too because I know someone might, might ask down in the comments, so I figured I'd touch on it a little bit. Uh, and then lastly, a couple different wastegate options that I have for you guys because I know everyone wants a little bit of like recommendations and suggestions here. Typically, whenever it comes to my cars, I always stick with tile as much as I can. But if you are looking for multiple options, you've got tile, turbo smart, and go fast bits. Those are the primary three that I have always considered running and that I have ran in the past. Now you might start seeing some like crazy electronic waste gates out there and all this other crazy stuff. Uh, unless you're doing some like weird crazy build or you're trying to like shoot for like the moon for horsepower, a standard waste gate will pretty much get the job done for you. Now, most of them out on the market are going to be V-band setups, which is always a plus because V-band is a easy to install 
install. B, it seals extremely well, and C, I mean, V-bands just look good, right? But that's really all I got for you guys on this one, so I wanted to sit down, kind of cover the differences between internal and external wastegates, uh, answer some of the generic questions that I've seen out there regarding them. So I do hope this helps you guys out, and if it did, go ahead and hit that like button, because that's what I'm talking about. Hit that like button, turn it blue if you haven't already, like the Subaru, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, because only 40% of you guys who watch these videos are subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Your boy appreciates it as always, but with that though, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.